brought to you by the Every Dollar app. Start budgeting for free today. Well, I had a question for you. I'm actually a pastor over here at a small town church, and I just want to say I very much appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Uh, but one question that's come up for me is I often hear you use the phrase, the borrower is slave to the lender. And I definitely agree with that principle in many ways. But then on the other end, I noticed that when it comes to a mortgage, you are okay borrowing in that instance, which seems almost to betray that principle a little bit. And I guess I was just curious on your reasoning as to why you think it's okay to borrow in that instance. But then when it comes to something like a car, especially for someone like me, I live a little bit in the country where I'm at. So it's a little bit more difficult a car is almost a requirement pastor that is a wonderful question yeah it's a really good question of course you're quoting the scriptures proverbs 22 7 the rituals over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender and this is a biblical principle um that we're violating when we say it's okay to take out a mortgage and that's your point and you're you're correct completely on that um or when we tell people it's okay to do that so are you 26 I'm actually like 31, so 31. I had to think okay. about that for a second. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Yeah, you lose count around 30. It happens. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm on the 34th anniversary of my 30th birthday. But the, uh, um, all right, the, uh, uh, so it, it, the answer to your question is, it is the only hypocritical advice we give on this show. It's the only thing that was hypocritical we give on this show. It's the only thing we tell people it's okay to do that I never do. I went broke in my 20s as I was a baby Christian. I had just met God, and I discovered in that process a guy teaching that what the Bible said about money named Larry Burkett, and I said, I'm going to follow what the Bible says. I'm never borrowing money again, and I've never borrowed money again. I don't borrow money for anything ever for any reason under any circumstances, Everything else I tell people on the show to do, I do exactly what I say to do. Um, Allowing people to take out a mortgage without me yelling at them, um, it's the only time that my advice is inconsistent with my life. Does that make sense? Right. And it's completely, completely fair for you to call me out on it, and then I'll answer your question. But I wanted to caveat that and say, I don't borrow money for anything. And sometimes when I get a question where it's kind of borderline whether they have to borrow or not, I tell them that story. I say, hey, I don't borrow for anything, and I recommend that. That is the best way. If you follow biblical principles, you're going to, in your marriage, your marriage is going to prosper. If you follow biblical principles raising your kids, your kids are going to be amazing. If you follow biblical principles in your mental health and your emotional state, you're going to prosper. And the same is true in your money and in your leadership. If you're running a church, running a business, same thing's true. So I, I... evangelical, man. I believe if the Bible says it and you do it, it's a good thing, right? So I'm with you on that. Um, Now, the reason that I lighten up when someone calls in on that is two things. One is I can pretty much talk you out of or call you stupid taking out a car loan because cars go down in value, the interest rate is higher, and there's no correlation between buying cars with payments and becoming wealthy. Very few millionaires will tell you that, oh, the best thing I ever did was agree to borrow on a car because I needed a car because I was out in the country and I was driving a long way and I needed a car. No millionaires told us that when we studied 10,000 of them. So the fruit is not there. I'm a fruit inspector. Okay. The second thing is millionaires do tell us that they borrowed to buy a house many times and when they got it paid off, they never borrowed money again after that. They're debt averse, but not completely mortgage averse. So the, the data is in that millionaires do do that, even though I would tell you the best way to do it is save up and pay cash for it. It's hard to get people to save up for 10 years to buy a house. I can get them to save up three years to buy a car or to 18 months to buy a car, but I can't, I've had trouble doing that. So I make that violation, but I also often tell people all the time when I say that, uh, you know, no more than a 15 year mortgage, no more than a payment of a fourth of your take home pay. You probably heard me say that Zachary. And and then get the stupid house paid off as fast as you can because the shortest distance between where you are and wealth is debt freedom. And that's consistent across the thing. But you're exactly right. And But cars are a completely different thing. A car is the largest thing we buy that goes the wrong direction. It goes down in value. And when you finance a car, you're just begging to be middle class the rest of your life. 
financially, mathematically. Well, and most people are stupid enough to like take a car note on like a thirty thousand dollar car when they have no money either. Exactly. Yeah, like everybody listening right now, just about. Right, right. <laughs> You're right. I, I did. I. I did have one other thing, and by the way, I want to say I, I support everything you're doing wholeheartedly, including, like, I've been using myself many of these steps. Being a small-town pastor, you don't get paid a ton of money, and you have kids, and mm -hmm. so I've actually had to use these things for myself. So, again, I want to say thank you. Good. The one other thing I noticed, though, was as someone who was new to the Dave Ramsey program in many ways and was new to those steps is that I didn't hear a lot of talk about creating a buffer so as someone who was new, I didn't have any money in my checking account, right? Because I was using credit cards and then I was paying off those credit cards with the money in my account. So I never really had money in my account and I was in this endless cycle, obviously, like a lot of people were. So one thing that I thought just to, to consider is that in those baby steps, I almost thought there should be another baby step about creating a buffer because people need to, th they don't just need a $1,000 emergency fund. I thought that was the buffer whenever I was new to the Dave Ramsey program and the Dave Ramsey baby steps. But there's also this idea of making sure you have a buffer because you're going to have auto payments on preschool and mortgages and all types of stuff. So well, that should be part of your budgeting, Zachary. You should plan your, you should, it's budgeting is cash flow planning. And so you're planning to not take more money out of your checking account than you have in it. That's your buffer. And uh, you can put a hundred dollar buffer in there if you want, but that, that's fine. You don't need any more than that. There's nothing wrong with that, but you don't need a $2,000 buffer because you're uh, incompetent at budgeting. You need to have the budget date dialed in. We're paying the auto payment comes out here. This other payment comes out here. The paycheck planning aspect, it's called, and if you use the Every Dollar app, shows you how to do that. And so you need to plan out every situation there. But, so, hey, we're honored to have you as a new listener. I That is something that, that um, man, I, that, that rings home to me because here's what I fell in the trap of doing. My wife and I would make a budget, and then we would check our checking account to see where we were. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. We That's, shouldn't do that because then I would make it, I'd be like, oh, well, I can get a little more groceries. And then that. Yeah, because the checking account is not an indicator if you're on your budget. That's exactly right. And so yeah. then that buffer he's talking about, then all of a sudden the school would pull their tuition on the fourth instead of the fifth. And because I was not following the budget map we'd laid out, but I was checking the checking account yeah. part. You would never, a budget map is a plan and you would never plan to spend money that you don't have That's in your exactly account. That's exactly right. Yes. So don't plan to spend money you don't have in your account, and your need for a buffer goes away. Other than a common sense of fifty or hundred bucks or something for slippage, or little, you know, something being off twenty cents or something, you don't want to do that. We don't want a to the penny thing. But, but this concept of slosh, right? Because that covers my lack of detail and sticking to the detail. That that's not. You don't need slosh. That's right. That's not good. But yeah, and and a lot of people do that. So the trick is the thing that happens is your brain. And you and I have been talking about this in a bunch of other areas, too. Your brain rewires, the neuroplasticity, your brain rewires itself when you start making every single dollar come out when it's supposed to. Give every dollar of your income a name before the month begins. You and your spouse spit, share, spit shake, and pinky swear that we're sticking to this contract that we just wrote down. Something happens and changes from that chaotic wild man that you were before, and you're, you're re it takes about 90 days for that rewiring to completely occur. And that neuroplasticity, it changes your behavior. It's behavior transformation. And so the detail matters in that situation because you're forcing your brain to work really hard. Yeah, that's what you want. Create your free every dollar budget today, the simplest way to budget for your life.